Sorry. I would like to give the floor to our dear friend, former member of the European Parliament, uh, member of the UK delegation within uh, our political ECR political group, now member of the House of Lords, uh, life peer of um, UK, Lord uh, Daniel Hannan. I know your time is limited, but please address us just uh, with your few sentences. Well, thank you very much, Anna. It's a real pleasure to see you and uh, to see many old friends and colleagues. Last month, I was with a British delegation, a parliamentary delegation, with Anna Fottiger uh, in Pomerania, uh, building a playground for Ukrainian refugees. The, it was an orphanage that had moved in its entirety uh, from Ukraine to Poland. And Anna was a wonderful hostess, of course, and we saw uh, the tremendous efforts that people were going to in that region. And this will be familiar to a lot of you in the room. But I want to spell out just how extraordinary has been the response from Poland and, as we've just heard, from Slovakia, Moldova and other frontline states in dealing with this extraordinary refugee crisis. Three million Ukrainians in Poland and at every level people have stepped up. Local government, the healthcare system, the education system, mobile phone companies giving free data, newspapers printing Ukrainian language editions, people opening their houses, making available uh, all the Airbnbs, hotel rooms, and so on. All in a very unfussy and brisk way, without any self-pity, without any self-congratulation. And I think perhaps one of the reasons why Poland stepped up so impressively is because Poles, of all people, know the value of nationhood understand the value of sovereignty, understand what it means to be fully independent and not in a client relationship with a dominating neighbor. One thing that the Ukrainian conflict has taught us all is the value of independence. All the people who, not of course in the ECR group, but in some of our other groups in the European Parliament, who uh, until February were disdaining nationality as a sort of perversion, uh, who were arguing that the nation state was redundant and, and dangerous and, and prone to racism, are suddenly flying the national flag of a friendly country. And Ukraine is teaching us that the freedoms that we value, uh, the basic human rights, free speech, free assembly, the right to cast a vote, uh, equality before the courts, are best protected and flourish most strongly in a nation state. The fact of being a nation state doesn't guarantee those things, but it enables them. It's not a sufficient guarantor of freedom, but it is a necessary component of it. And in uh, defense of the national principle in Ukraine, I want to just finish with one uh, message. Again, I don't think it's particularly to people in this room or colleagues from the ECR and our friends and allies, but I detect a tendency in some European capitals to say, we need to bring this to a dirty end. It may be unjust, it may be dishonorable, but we can't afford any more disruption to the world economy. Uh, the French president Emmanuel Macron said in terms, we mustn't humiliate either of the parties. There has to be uh, an honorable way out. I hear the same thing in Germany. I hear the same thing uh, sometimes from friends in the EU institutions. And really, I just want to finish with this point, which is that given what has happened since February, given what Ukraine has suffered, it is not for any other country to put pressure on the authorities in Kiev as to when and on what terms to settle. The decision ultimately has to be for the Ukrainian people. And those of us who believe in freedom and in nationhood should be supportive of their sovereign rights, should give them the tools they need to finish the job, and should allow them to determine what are acceptable conditions for some kind of peace. 
So let me just finish again by saying thank you to all of you who are doing this. Thank you particularly to Anna Fotiger, who has been tireless in advancing the cause of Ukraine since long before the invasion was launched. Děkuji Polsku. Děkuji Ukraine.